Student protests have a new target, big banks. Youth-led climate activist group Banking for a Better Future wants universities to end bank sponsorships as climate change quickly worsens. And they're not alone. According to a study published in the Journal of Climate Change and Health, more than half of 1,000 young Canadians feel sad, anxious, and powerless when it comes to climate change. For more this morning, we are joined by Danny Mitchie, digital organizer for Banking on a Better Future. Welcome to the studio. Good morning, Danny. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Why has your group targeted its activism towards banks, specifically on university campus? Yeah, there's a few key reasons. Uh, but the biggest one is that um, when young people make decisions about where they're going to bank, those decisions tend to last their entire lives. Mm -hmm. So we're an incredibly valuable um, customer base for banks, as well as a lot of these schools uh, students are studying business, they're studying tech, um, and the big banks are eyeing them as future talent that could work for them. So we know that this is a target demographic for the banks, and we also know that youth have a lot of power um, in pressuring those banks to make different decisions so that we will choose to bank with them and choose to work for them. Yeah, I guess your job is to remind students of their actual power. Exactly. Uh, what, do you, what does your activism look like on campus? Yeah, so there's a variety of work that's happening on our campuses. A lot of these schools are kind of continuing the legacy of the school divestment movement, which has been going on for about a decade or so. What is that if people don't know? Uh, pressuring um, schools themselves to divest uh, from fossil fuels, so the university, to um, their pensions and other kinds of investments to move them away from fossil fuels. Um, so a lot of these students have had experience through that, um, and we're kind of continuing that legacy through uh, flyering, education, tabling, as well as some creative action, students, sit-ins, um, all to pressure big banks, in particular RBC, which is the largest funder of fossil fuels in Canada and was the largest funder in the world in 2022, to get off our campuses unless they make different choices in terms of funding um, fossil fuels and um, also projects that violate Indigenous sovereignty. What has been the reaction from big banks? Uh, well, we're just getting started, but last year alone we had uh, major protests across about 16 campuses um, and three major wins. So we had wins at the University of Toronto, uh, the University of York, and the University of Ottawa. Um, and we've heard in particular a response from RBC um, on the day uh, at U of Ottawa had a sit-in. Um, and it's mostly lip service, it's a lot of PR. They really want us to think that we are they are environmentally friendly and that they're on our side, but we know that the numbers tell a different story. And you're there to remind them. We are seeing the effects of climate change firsthand. I mean, we're, I think most of us are all just coming off all that smoke that was in the air recently. Yeah. Uh, what role do the banks play in fighting climate change directly? It's not a connection that people make easily. No, it isn't. But yeah, you're totally right. We're feeling those impacts, especially young people as we prepare for our futures. People in school, you know, they're trying to think about the world that they're going into. And the reality is that Canada's big five banks all have major investments in fossil fuel projects. And many of those projects violate the free prior and informed consent of Indigenous nations. In particular, RBC is the leading bank uh, funding fossil fuels. So in 2022, they funded over $54 billion uh, in fossil fuels, and they've invested more than $330 billion since 2016. And what's their reaction, well, I guess, in particular from RBC when you make statements like this and you come on television and say it? What kind of response have you had from them? Yeah, so there's an attempt to really try to make us believe that... Um, they are environmentally friendly and that they're on our side and that you know they're, they're trying to protect the interest of their shareholders. Uh, but we really want RBC to hear us when we say that they can be a leader um, in this transition, in this change from fossil fuel financing to other uh, investments, um, and that students are looking to them to be a leader in that way. And that's what you're encouraging. Pos it is possible for financial interviews institutions to divest from these kinds of investments yeah. and make uh, ones that are better for the environment yeah. climate change as a whole. Yeah, not only is it possible, but it's, it's necessary. Danny, thanks for coming on this morning. Yeah, thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.